Arif Tov Khabri, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, and new evidence is surfacing that the deadly uh, nerve agent that was used on the uh, Skripal case there in the UK called Novichok was not only in the hands of Russia. And in fact, the United States, the CIA, and even the Uzbekistan government has had their hands on this particular nerve agent. Kind of lets you know that what the UK was trying to define as Russia only guilt doesn't lay only in the hands of Russia. Listen to Miss May here as she speaks about uh, this deadly Novichok gas. It is now clear that Mr. Skripal and his daughter were poisoned with a military grade nerve agent of a type developed by Russia. This is part of a group of nerve agents known as Novichok. Based on the positive identification of this chemical agent by world leading experts at the Defence Science and Technology Laboratory at Porton Down, our knowledge that Russia has previously produced this agent and would still be capable of doing so. Now, that's another interesting statement that she makes there that the people there uh, in their own labs are saying that it's Russia that made it. And, well, it's a totally different picture that we're finding out coming out of the UK. Kind of have to thank uh, uh, so, some uh, very interesting journalists there. One that really caught my attention on this was Vanessa Bealey in a, th in a post that she shared uh, from a news article I'm going to share with you in just a moment. But before I do, let me, as you see, Miss May making this claim here about the uh, particular group that she's referring to, Porton and Down, the scientists there, this is what came out from Greg Murray. Craig Murray, he says here, of a type developed by liars. I have now received confirmation from a well-placed FCO source that Porton Down scientists are not able to identify the nerve gas as being of a Russian manufacturer and have been resentful of the pressure being placed on them to do so. Porton Down would only sign up to the formulation of a type developed by Russia. After a rather difficult meeting where there was agreed as a compromise formulation, the Russians were allegedly researching in the Novichok program a generation of nerve agents, which could be produced from commercially available precursors such as insecticides and fertilizers. This substance is a Novichok at that sense. It is of that type, just as I am typing on a laptop of a type developed by the United States, though this one was made in China. Well, it's, getting, it's going to get even more interesting. Now, here's what really gets me there is besides uh, Theresa May, Prime Minister of the UK there, uh, we also had this article pop up. Novichok, nerve agent produced at only one site in Russia, says expert. Well, I guess any expert could say what they want, but let's take a look at what is really going on. It says here, and this is on... Um, uh, uh, Squawk Box, very interesting article by squawkbox.org. May told the UK only to two Novichok alternatives. What's her BBC excuse for ignoring this then? All right, and they go into the Squawk Box, goes into the article right here that... Um, let me back up. We'll read from the top here a little bit. Theresa May told MPs in a country this week that we have no choice but conclude Russia's culpability for the nerve agent attack, reportedly Novichok and Salisbury. She based this claim on the idea that there are only two possi possible alternatives. Either Russia committed the attack or Russia lost control of its chemical weapons. And since the beastly Russians had only responded with sarcasm to her demand that they pick one of her binary options, there was no alternative conclusion other than that Russia's state was culpable. Well, that's kind of ironic. I guess it's something I brought up already with you guys. What about the former Soviet Union? What about the collapse of the Soviet Union with that holy alliance with Pope John Paul II and Ronald Reagan. Oh, wow. Could it possibly be the Novichok nerve agents, the class that this is under? Could it have been in one of the former Soviet states? I actually suggested possibly Ukraine, since we have the fascist neo-Nazi installed CIA government working there. 
But let's move on down and take a look at what this man puts together. Very interesting. It says Uzbekistan was part of the Soviet Union until 1991 when it declared its independence. Eight years later, the BBC and other outlets reported that the U.S. experts were in Uzbekistan to help destroy its stocks of nerve agents, especially Novichoks. What do you know? Because Uzbekistan had been a major testing center for the chemical weapons. Now, here's the BBC article right here, August 9th, 1999, on a good, nice Monday morning, published at, well, Monday evening, sorry, 2046 p.m., World Asia Pacific U.S. dismantles chemical weapons. It is reported tests were carried out in the desert near Aral Sia by Central Asian correspondent Luis uh, Hidalgo. A group of American defense experts have arrived in Uzbekistan to start helping the Uzbeks dismantle a uh, de decontaminate one of the former Soviet Union's largest chemical weapons testing facility. U.S. officials say the Chemical Research Institute in Western Uzbekistan was a major research site for a new generation of secret, highly lethal chemical weapons known as Novichok. Wow. What is this then that these guys over here are saying? Oh, wow. According to their expert, the only one, the Guardian says, the only one that does it is someplace in the middle part of Russia. Well, not according to the facts that are being brought out. So Uzbekistan was for eight whole years in possession of Novichok and not controlled by Russia. So there are several other possible scenarios. In addition to Mrs. May's only two possible that could easily have nothing whatever to do with the Russian government. Secret cells by Uzbekistan, which anybody knows that at the breakup of the Soviet Union, there was major American uh, influence there in order to be able to sell off most of Russia and make up a brand new constitution for Russia. Why do you think Putin kind of got all bent out of shape when he saw the country just being totally dismantled by a bunch of uh, high-wielding, uh, what would you want to call I don't even know what to call them. Anyway, that from Uzbekistan by persons unknown could be another one. Retention of samples by U.S. personnel during the destruction process in 1999-2000 that later found their way into other hands. And believe me, that's a plausible one, isn't it? Isn't it interesting? Seymour Hersh shows that the CIA was working to get sarin gas from Libya into the hands of ISIS with the help of President Erdogan, at the time Prime Minister Erdogan, and MP member of the Turkish government Aaron Erdem indicts his own Prime Minister at the time to having the blood of the Syrian children on his hands for the gassing of the innocent civilians in that country. Wow. And they do have two witnesses. The justice minister of Turkey also knew very well about that secret deal called the rat line as they uncovered it. I guess Erdogan wasn't so good at hiding and covering his steps. He does imprison everybody now that disagrees with him. That way nobody can expose his embarrassing state secrets. Now, it's not just this guy here on Squawk Box. We also have this man right here, Stephen uh, McIntyre, I assume, and Steve, for, forgive me if I've mispronounced your name, may ask whether Russia lost control of nerve agents. Yes, long ago before Putin government. Russia lost control of a major nerve agent facility for the no Novichok in Uzbekistan in 1990s. U.S. ended up with control of the facility, not Russia. So who's been in control of the Novichok ever since then? Well, it seems like, unfortunately, our American government has been the guys in charge of all that. Sputnik picked up a little bit about what Steve tweeted there and this one here says here, former main Soviet Novichok facility in Uzbekistan unsecure under Uzbek control since 1990 criminal groups could have obtained, he notes, U.S. control of Uzbek facilities since 1999, CIA, as Stephen brings out here, formula public and readily synthesizable at port and downs or labs in the U.S., Israel, U Ukraine, and C. Hmm. What do you know? I guess Russia's not the only choice, Miss May. You guys really don't like me there, do you? Which, which one of you, anyway, was the one that decided to uh, try to block me on Twitter? Hmm. I guess it's getting a little bit too hot in the room. Truth is something the New World Order cannot handle. 
I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live, and we will tell you the truth.